Hey folks, it's Rob here with another Real Deal on the Field and we're out with Scotty and Vanessa. Uh, I think this is the second project that we've done a Real Deal on the Field for for you guys. Yep. Uh, but yep. this is the third project that you guys have done as a joint venture. We're going to talk to that in, in a little bit of uh, time as to how that actually works. But firstly, tell us what it is that we're actually standing in front of. Okay, so this is a, a two into two subdivision. So it was a splitter block and what we've managed to do is slide the house over and uh, subdivide off a smaller lot. So we're able to retain the house in the process. So I'm just gonna explain that from those people out there who don't know what a splitter block is. So it's one title that have got two lots already on it, but because of the size of the house, it didn't actually fit on the individual lots all by themselves. Yep. So you've effectively done a boundary realignment and realign that. Uh, and in most instances, uh, you might have had some challenges with that if you were in a normal residential zone, but there is a, a strange little twist on this particular property and that's because the zoning is actually zoned for townhouses. So in Brisbane, that's called low medium residential or LMR. Yep. Uh, in other locations, that might be an R3 or something along those lines. Uh, but effectively, you've seen that as an opportunity to make a smaller lot. So this one here is a little bit skinnier. Um, uh, but how, how wide is this one, mate? Uh, it's about 9.5. 9.5 metres wide, but technically I think it's about 350 square metres. Yes. yes. Say something, Vanessa. Yes, so, uh, <laughs> yes, I'm going to say something. Actually, we did keep the house because it's an important factor in here. The house is protected. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. So uh, this is what is called a Queenslander. So, Correct. So uh, it was built pre-1946 and has, a, I guess, a character overlay that's actually protected it. So had to actually keep the house, but you okay. picked it up, slid it across, very common in Queensland. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not so common in other states, but should be done, folks. There's more houses <laughs> on stumps than you, than you uh, uh, know what to do with. So there's lots of opportunity to keep existing uh, houses where humanly possible. Uh, there's so much traffic going past, hoping that it doesn't impact us. Uh, but it's opened up this second block. Now, this is also something that's got two street frontage, hasn't it? Correct. Yeah. Yes. More, and, more than one word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, we do have two street frontage, but the reason we cut the side this way is because just behind the house, you can not see it right now, there is a pole that we wanted to keep, and then the lot has two street frontages as well, so it's a bit more flexible than actually putting the house in one um, frontage and the lot to the other. Yeah, so able to keep the, the small swimming pool at the back of the property, uh, which yeah. does need a little bit of TLC at this moment in time. <laughs> so we're not going to show you the shade of green that it is, uh, no. but we do know that with a bit of chlorine, that will come back up fantastic. Yes. Uh, what we're going to do, folks, we're going to, uh, I guess, pop inside, have a look at what they've done from a Renault perspective uh, in this house, and then talk a little bit about how this joint venture opportunity has worked between you. So stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in two secs. Hey folks, here we are inside the house, a uh, small renovation that's actually going to, uh, we're going to walk through in a couple of secs, but what I really wanted to do is take the time to actually talk about the fact that this is the third project that you guys are doing as a JV together, uh, and Scotty, I think you mentioned that you guys are actually in two other deals uh, in the yeah. pipeline, so this is the third one under running. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people out there wanting to do joint ventures uh, and don't really know the different dynamics and that sort of thing that go into it. Why don't you guys talk about firstly how you got together from a JV perspective and what the different roles are that you play with each other. Okay. So, so yeah, go Vanessa. All right, so we met at uh, Property Development Formula doing Rob's course, actually, uh, learning the same things at the same time. So that's how we met, actually. And uh, we decided to work together on projects because when he did his first deal, I was part of it as an investor. So looking at how he works, I thought it was a good idea to buddy up with somebody that already had at least one project uh, as an experience and uh, noticed that we had complementary skills as well. Mm. So regardless of what you do in the JV, I suppose that you need to have complementary skills. Yeah, yeah. And, and what we mean by that, just so one person's going to be really strong in one area, the other person's going to be, uh, and you might have a weakness, you want the other person to be strong in the area that you've got a weakness. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just going to say um, the, the purpose of coming together or one of the purposes was to team up and try and get as many opportunities as possible um, just to you know get more experience in in the subdivision um, avenue and yeah just keep going forward so but towards both of our goals yeah, absolutely so the different roles that you play in this uh, process so Vanessa you're the money maker 
Correct. So I usually talk to the people externally of the deal, like uh, the people that might come on board as an investor, talk to the lenders, and um, also uh, quite a few times I negotiate the deal, not in this case particularly, but um, actually talking to the people externally, whereas Scott talks to the people internally with the consultants, the town planner, the civil engineers, and so forth. Yeah. Yep. So I guess, as you said, very complementary to each other and running different elements of the deal and that sort of thing. So. Uh, what about when there's points of conflict, fight, how does that work? How do you resolve your resolution, your disagreements? I, I suppose that we didn't have that yet, <laughs> so it's working well. well I think start, we'll let's start one now. Let's see how <laughs> we, I mean, there are disagreements in things like what purchase price are we going to go in at and um, just agreements on certain aspects of the project, what uh, exit strategy we might do, but it's all just a, a big conversation, honest about what points, uh, you know, it's, it's like an internal debate type of thing. Yes. So uh, we debate with each other and bring forward our points of why we think this is the right way forward. Uh, and we're kind of, that's worked so far um, just in, you know, being able to resolve a lot of those issues. So. Yes. Awesome. I guess just to add to that, uh, mainly we, when we're looking at the purchase price, sale price, we almost challenge each other to get a better outcome before we actually mm. go to the person we're dealing with. So we actually negotiate between us first, and then we go up. Very good yeah. tactic. Well, let's have a very quick guided tour of, uh, of the house. Uh, we'll do the quick fly through. Now, the builder is in the background, actually on the phone at the moment. So we'll whiz through that uh, in two seconds flat and not over, over listen to his conversation <laughs> as much as we can. Uh, let's do that, folks. I'm just gonna take the camera off the tripod. So give me two seconds and see see if we can't kill anyone in the process. So um, this okay. is a big wide open space. Uh, Correct. It never used to be. So uh, Scotty, why don't you tell us what we had to do in order to uh, open this space up? Okay, uh, so as you can see here, um, this, you've got a uh, column and we've put in a new beam. So this used to be an actual wall uh, that came up to about here. And you can see and we, that it will the to make that happen. Yes, and uh, so yeah, we've opened that space up to create a bit more of a dining, living, kitchen space, nice and open. And we've actually closed in a wall in that position uh, to create a new bedroom. So we've done the opposite. So we've actually removed a wall and put a wall in. Yes, Correct. because the other, other option was a bit closed in. So there was a, it made this space really confined um, and dark. So now we've opened this up, created a new bedroom um, so adding value to the property and uh, yeah, it's come up really well. Very good. Now uh, we'll do a quick whiz through of the kitchen. As, you, as we said, the, uh, the builder is actually on the phone in there. So maybe we can just do from an outside view. Come on in, Scotty, just kind of point us through. So brand new kitchen, mate. Uh, yes, we've got in a new kitchen. We actually opened this opening up as well. This um, used to be a wall to about here. So it was quite a small opening. And again, it was quite confined. So imagine just trying to walk in here. Um, the layout was very closed in as well. So um, that this has opened up the space a, a lot more and yeah, just come up uh, a lot nicer than what it was before. Very good. So. Okay, well, uh, four bedroom, mate. So we won't go through every single bedroom. Why don't we just go through the master and show us what you're doing in there? Uh, yep. So you can see these old queens, they've got a lovely lead lighting uh, throughout the place, keep them alive. <laughs> do, do, do the show itself. Okay. Uh, so lead lighting on all the windows and the baby windows, that's sort of thing. Beautiful old houses, they, yeah. they renovate nicely. So we've got a walk in row here. So it's a nice tree that's being installed. Okay. Yep. Give us the guided tour of the building. Okay, so this is a new ensuite. It used to be a bathroom before opening up to the hallway. And what we've done is changed the configuration. So it's actually coming from the bedroom, the main bedroom, and it became an ensuite. So this was originally closed here. And where the, water, I guess the cabinets are, or the wardrobe is, is actually, it was actually the door going towards the hallway. So yep. So change. Take the advantage of of reconfiguring the, uh, the property where, where, sorry, the floor land to kind of open up the space and make it a little bit more modern. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Oh, uh, now there's, there is one other element on this, and I've got a phone call coming through. Hopefully, that didn't interrupt the. Uh, come into the shop, guys. <laughs> so, there you have it, folks. Just a little bit of a walkthrough. Now, uh, one of the things that we didn't mention a little bit earlier is you've got some creative terms when you actually purchase the property. So, uh, some delayed settlement, which, uh, so tell us a little bit about what that was, how you actually negotiated, yep. and what advantages you were able to get out of that process. Okay, so uh, we're able to get a delayed settlement of four months. Yep. Uh, so, and we were also able to get consent to lodge a development application in the process. Uh, that actually helped the owner moved to their new location. So they were still scouting out where they want to buy um, to downsize. So that gave them time as well. So we were able to benefit, we we're both beneficiaries from that. Um, and so we were able to get the DA approved before we settled and we were able to pretty much start construction as soon as we were able to. So you, you picked up a really good point, Scotty, that everyone out there uh, needs to really pay attention to because all the agents want quick, fast settlements so the agent gets their commission in the pocket. But quite often the vendor isn't ready to move to the next place. They haven't chosen where they want to go. They want certainty on the sale, uh, but they need time to find the next place so they know how much money you've got to spend. So you've identified that opportunity, you've given them a benefit and that's actually given you a benefit. So you've saved four months in holding costs, which has then meant that your development application can come through. And by the time you actually settled, you're actually ready to just pull the trigger and actually start the work. Yep, so that's fantastic right. outcome for everyone uh, involved in that process. So I guess wherever humanly possible folks, uh, look for those opportunities. Uh, and in some instances, you can actually get it to the point where you can run the entire project uh, without actually owning it. Uh, that has happened several times uh, in our community and also a couple of deals that I've done. So always look for those opportunities. Um, it's been a pleasure looking at this particular deal. So second real deal uh, that I've recorded for you guys. Uh, third one that you're actually doing together and yeah. five in the pipeline. Okay. Uh, so uh, you guys are absolutely on fire. So Scotty, Vanessa, <laughs> uh, absolutely cranking it hard folks. Uh, and as they're starting to get momentum, uh, I guess things are building and building for these guys, so I can't wait to see where you guys are going to finish up. Now, if you want to see the full story on this, uh, make sure you tune in to one of our actual uh, meetups where they, these guys are going to present this as a full, uh, real deal at some point. Uh, mm. We haven't actually locked in a date on that, but it will happen, so watch out for that in the upcoming future. Until then, folks, we will see you on the next Real Deal Field. Bye for now. Thanks, Bye.